The longer I'm owning this vehicle, the more I'm admiring its looks. It's, uh, it's great, it really is. It doesn't look like any other van, minibus. Um, I particularly like this styling line here. I mean, it's really nice. Chrome grille is obviously a feature. The way the mirrors has got of integrated into the bodywork, wing creases, the blacked out glass. It's just lovely. I really like it. Anyway, on with the theme of the day, the back. First thing to note, electric side doors. They work by pushing the handle back or forward. Uh, they also work off the remote control or there are buttons in the front of the vehicle that allow you to open and close them, taxi styling. Next, check out the leg room. This is a full eight seater vehicle and everybody has huge amounts of leg room. So I'm five foot 10. The front seats are set for me. And look at that. And I could sit comfortably in any of the seats in this vehicle. We have a integrated step with courtesy lighting. And let's immediately just show you the leg room. As I said, I am five foot 10. I can just about reach to put my toes under the seat in front. I wouldn't sit like that because it's uncomfortable. That's kind of my normal seating position, I would say. And I have 400 mil clearance to the seat in front, 400 mil. Um, in this configuration, the seats behind have about 300 mil of clearance. And then we have the smallest boot space. Uh, so I'm going to just show you the boot space now so that you get a sense of when you've got a limo and everybody is sitting like this, how much boot have you got? So, as you can see, it's actually quite large. Maybe it doesn't come across in the shots because obviously this is so close to the back. But we can put shopping bags across the back um, full width, a whole week's worth from the supermarket, no problem whatsoever. Plus you've got this enormous amount of space underneath the seats, which I've got all sorts of things stashed in. But it's kind of up to you how much space you have for boot because you just pull this handle, slide and stop when you want to. There we go. You've got that much space. And that is from this edge to the backs of the seats around 900 mil, uh, rather less at the top, just because of the reclined angle, about 600 mil. And that's in the beginnings of what you can do with a luggage area in this vehicle. But we'll come on to that later. Now in the back, now we have rather restricted leg room, but if I move these seats, lift in this handle to a position that any normal vehicle would be proud of. As you can see, I've now got more space in the back of there than in any other saloon I've ever owned, except the XJL. What does that look like? Well, I'm just gonna match these up. You lift the handle down here for the center seat. Lift the knob on the side of this one. Whoops, too far. That's about even. And then if I jump out. So I've got maximum boot space. 
everybody in the front has got an enormous amount of space. There's a button or lever or handle here I can pull that releases the seat from its mechanism. And we have enormous seats, which are very comfortable in the rear. I'm just gonna jump aboard for you. Pull the seat back. To its correct position. It's a bit of a faff to do from here. There we go. And I've now got a very comfortable adult seat where I'm sat on. And I've got about four inches, three to four inches, I'd say, full clearance in front of my knees. My feet go straight underneath. There is literally no problem. If I wanted to match things up a little bit more, you could push, sorry, you could push the seat forward to say there and have extravagant amounts of space in the back whilst the front seats are still very, very comfortable. So this is a full on genuine eight seater vehicle. So I'm back in the middle row. If I want to close the door, I just touch the silver handle and that shuts, that's great. We have curtains at the windows which can be operated by the driver. We have a grab handle with a coat hook. We have heat and air conditioning vents in the roof lining, which I can position how I want just to get just the perfect flow. And the heater and air conditioning in this vehicle is independent in the back. So it can be done for set on completely different sets of settings to that in the in the front we have a little reading light which shines down towards my lap we have the door locking we have one of many cup holders down here a tiny little ashtray and two compartments in a door pocket. I would suggest that one's intended to put your phone in and here we have a deep pocket. There is also one of the many speakers down here. On the B pillar we have a really good handle to help you get in and out or just to hold on to. We have a big seat back pocket which we've got all the dog's leads in at the moment. At the base of the seat, you can get your feet under, but there is also air outlets to warm your feet. In higher spec vehicles, there would be a footrest that comes out of this. Then we have the first of our remote controls. Press the button, it releases it. This remote control, you point at the black screen just above the mirror. Rear seat navigation, press the button and a screen drops down from the ceiling. Angle, if we press that, changes the angle of the screen to improve viewing and reduce reflections. And this vehicle is equipped with TV but because we don't have analog broadcasts in the UK anymore this can't pick it up without some serious modifications so in effect there is no TV there's the TV on but there are no signals from that picture adjustment wide angle sound adjustment now I've inserted a DVD into the player which is in the head unit of our car. If I use this to open our 
overhead screen. Press VTR. There is our DVD. Down here we have the controls for volume. So, we'll put that one away. Over here, we have another remote. It has an audio button. So I just press the close button. This other remote has the really important stuff, which is to be able to control the air con in the rear. So what we'll do is look up at the display in the middle of here. And if I use the remote, I've got buttons for auto, off, select which is you know which position you want the air blowing fan and temperature so if we go off that disappears we go auto it comes back on and shows that the rear compartment is set to 22 degrees and head and feet and the fan run is running at uh, speed number two i can override the auto by pressing the fan up and control fan speeds. Hopefully you can hear that. We can change the temperature. And we can press select, which changes face, feet, face and feet. And if I put it on face in the rear, that activates these panels. There's a very big dome light or interior light, depending on how you prefer to call it, in the back here. Uh, there's a button for literal on off. There we go. The one on the opposite side connects it to door opening or not. So I have that depressed, it means when the door's open, the light comes on. And the other two buttons, again labeled in kanji, are dimmers. So you can have the brightness up. Or the brightness down to whatever setting you like. Equally on our remote control we have rear courtesy dim and when I press that we can dim the light in using the remote. Now we'll look at the middle row seating. So in my car, this is in a, I guess you call it a velour finish. The vast majority of specs and models will come with leather or half leather. Um, I am really enjoying the velour finish though, and it ages rather well. Um, start off with armrests, both sides of the outermost seats. Headrests adjustable for height. more heat outlets below the seats. We have little pockets on the side which hold extra seat belts. And this is a lap strap seat belt, which is not normally necessary. As you can see, we have a inertia reel. So I'll come back to that in one moment. Over here, we have the seat belt that you're gonna use and another one in a little pocket down here which is pulls out for the center seat belts. And a center seat belt uh, attachment points are tucked away in a little pocket there. There's more seat belts tucked in pockets. So this car appears to have far more seat belts when it really needs. And I'll come onto that a little bit more in a second. Adjustment is really easy. Lift this and your seat can glide literally all the way forward or 
all the way back. Sit it where you like. And the seats are fully reclining. You lift this lever and the seat rest will pop forward. But equally, you can then position that backrest anywhere that you fancy. So if you want to have a really reclined seat in position, that's fine. And that will literally go to flat. And the whole rear of this car converts into a bed. The middle seat forward. So if you've got a little one who wants to feel like they're in the front, they can do that. Or in our case, the dog likes to sit there in the front. There's a second handle on the back of the centre seat so that you can move that one from the front or from the back. The middle row seats have a lever that looks like that on their inner sides. And what that enables you to do is, if I slide this one forward a little, just for my ease, like so, and then grab hold of the equivalent of that on this one, give it a little tug, and a seat swivels. And this enables you to have different configurations. Maybe you want to be facing in because you're having a bit of a picnic. Remember this car has doors on both sides, so you can change the layout to however suits you. Or maybe you want to rotate that chair to face that way. And then you can face the rear of the vehicle which brings in some of those extra seat belts. Because the inertia reel is now here, it's no use to this seat here. So the extra seat belts that you saw tucked in pockets can, can pull out and become a lap strap because I'm now facing backwards. Let's have another little look at this centre seat. The centre seat has a lever on it. If I pull that centre seat lever there, and another little one there, then that drops down and makes a table, which is kind of in the middle of all the seating. And on the back of that, a little button you press, and yet more cup holders. This, as we said, can move around, so it can go to be a little table between the front between the rearmost seats for them to use, or this can be slid forward. I'll just switch seating positions now. And you can see it could be used by that seat that's facing me, or indeed slid right up to the front to keep it out of the way. If I put this back up, like so, then it has other little features. There's a tab on the side here, and if we lift that, we have not only a little tray and more cup holders, but the underside of the lid becomes a tray. That's got a rubber grippy mat on it, and that makes a good place to place drinks or sandwiches, that sort of thing. Again, turn it around. So many ways to use this vehicle, it's ridiculous. And if I now, you'll notice the shaping on the side of the seat. That goes all the way forward and becomes a tray table in the front. Ridiculously clever. You'll note this T-shaped handle is now exposed and this enables you to move it from the top. And then we have yet another level where this opens up and you can store more things.
So I'm facing backwards again. I can lift the lever on the side of the rear most seats and I can move them further away, effectively making a ballroom here where I can't even reach the seat in front of me. Just dropping myself into that rearmost seat. So comfortable, really plush, these seats. Um, I have a lever I can lift, which reclines my backrest. Um, I have another lever, as you've seen, for front and rear. And if I come all the way forward, I could bring this all the way back and flatten it and make myself a little lounger or indeed go all the way back flat. Let's have a look at what it's like in the very back. We have curtained windows. We have, again, two air vents, heater and air conditioning in the rear to complement the two for the middle row. Um, seat belts in pockets so that you don't sit on them, but there is still a seat belt for the middle. Glide over to the side. We have a little tray. Again, phone sized, which moves with the seat. So it's always in the same position. We have curry hooks. We have open and close. And this opens or closes the side windows, which pop out electrically on a mechanism. It's quite cool. There's a little bureau top here, which opens to show another couple of cup holders, but could equally be used to store anything you like. If I flip around, we've got much the same arrangement on the other side, but we also have a 100 or 110 volt outlet because the car has an onboard inverter, meaning that you can run mains items from this socket as long as the engine is running. It is 100 volts, it can be converted to 240. We have here a video input socket, which means you have phono inputs to the screen that comes down from the ceiling. So you could connect to that an independent DVD player, a phone, a laptop, a tablet, a games console, whatever you want, another drop down cupboard. And in this one, a little removable ashtray as well. Here how you can manipulate the space in the back to give you as much or as little cargo space as you like. This is kind of the mid midway position, which is an enormous boot and still loads of space in the seating areas. But this car has one really good trick for cargo space. Let me show you. So should I need a van, what I can do is simply pull this lever. It is an advantage before you pull that lever to flatten the seats, just makes it a lot easier to do what I'm about to do. But now you can't see that lever. So all I'm gonna do is pull it just out of, so out of shot and that allows a whole seat to fold up sideways. It's a little hook which we plug onto that there, and this leg folds away. Same on this side, obviously. Here's the release lever, but I'm gonna fold this flat first. So that's now out of sight. So down they go, pull the little lever again, and then up go the seats. And I've now got a fast, comfortable five seat van. And I can sit this way, which gives me huge amount of space and massive cargo space. Or I could fit these seats like so. That's with massive amounts of leg room uh, or conventional amounts of leg room with or without this center seat which could be in the front 
it could be put level with that one or it could be returned to its tabletop configuration <sighs> truly amazing in the back here we have the air intake filter for the rear heating system cargo lashing hooks this is access for tail lights changes over here we have a boot light so you can see what you're doing in the cargo area we have a 12 volt outlet we have a little bit more storage and we have a lot more storage full size spare wheel is under the floor and there's a little winder there which you'll use to lower the wheel down to the floor very easy to pull out off a tray talked about before a full set of sun blinds but of course this makes a fabulous shelter for picnicking and a place to sit well that completes the tour of the interior of the rear of my poverty spec nissan l grand so most models will be more luxurious and have more features if you're enjoying our channel then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos and please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos and below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat.